up for it, find it, make it your own. It's the Get Thrifty Podcast. Welcome to the show. Welcome listeners. Welcome thrifters, pickers, antiquers, and DIYers from all over the country. You have discovered the Get Thrifty Podcast, brought to you by ARC Thrift Stores right here in colorful Colorado. ARC Thrift Stores is a Colorado thrift store chain, and if you're ever in Colorado or visiting us, please check out one of our 31 Front Range and Western Slope locations. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. I am your host, Maggie Civic, and we are all about sharing everything that has to do with shopping secondhand. We've discovered that thrift customers are literally some of the most unique and gifted people out there, and we're trying to find and talk to every last one of them. If you're a person who's part of our unique thrift culture, please contact us. We'd love to promote your business and all of your social channels and share your stories and advice with our listeners. You can find us on Instagram at ArcThrift. Send us a DM and let's chat. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so excited. Please welcome Shane to the show. Shane Montroy is a former comic shop owner, which we're going to have to ask a lot of questions about, and lifelong toy collector. He thrifts toys, clothing, and vintage magazines for his collection. Shane and his wife, Valerie, who we all know from A Stitch in Life, also have their own podcast and Instagram page where they share their love of toys and collecting. Shane, we want to know everything. Welcome to the show. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> everything Everything is such a broad uh broad subject so i guess you better get started huh yeah yeah let's let's dive in <laughs> so like i said in in your little bio there you are the husband of one of our favorite podcast guests valerie from a stitch in life she is amazing she is all over the yeah. interwebs doing amazing things and as we both said at the start of the show we are obsessed with her and today we're going to yeah. ask our guests to get obsessed with you. So without cool. further ado, let's dive in. How did you get started into this whole world of collecting? Uh, I, I would just say I've always just had a lifelong appreciation for toys. Uh, that's grown into a love for toys and collecting of toys uh, based on interests in comic books, television, film, uh, you name it. Uh, just anything related to pop culture. Um, definitely into and um, have been really collecting comic books and action figures just since as long as I can remember. Well, I love that. And I have in my notes here that maybe your grandfather kind of kicked things off for you, maybe a little spark from him. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yep. I remember the first sort of exciting thing I got from him was one of those um, little big books, if you're familiar with that. Um, it was called G-Man versus the Red X. <laughs> it was awesome. That's awesome from like way <laughs> yeah. back when. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and this is something that was gifted to me actually um, by he and my, uh, my great uncle. And uh, just something that I thought was so cool uh, to see. The little big books are the ones are like, you know, about like, four inches by four inches or five inches by five inches and one page is the text and then the other page is the illustration and it's just uh you know, it's like a little adventure book that they I think started back in the 1920s oh that is too cool so that oh, yeah. that particular book kicked off your love so how did you end up running a comic book store when I was a kid the really main available uh, source of pop culture for me was uh, comic books. We used to walk miles down these railroad tracks to go to this place called Pat's Book Nook. And this is in, uh, this is in Kansas, in Salina, Kansas. And we used to trek down there and she would have just stacks and stacks and stacks of comic books. And I really started becoming interested, you know, in Marvel, uh, Mad Magazine, just anything I could get my hands on uh, that, you know, picked my fancy in relation to that. And I had like a small, modest, kid size comic book collection that, uh, you know, really, you know, started to grow over the years. It, it kind of has gone dormant for me at periods in my life when I was younger, but um, I've always come back to it, you know, and um, just just something that's very rewarding to me and that 
you know, just sort of seems like a self-perpetuating hobby. I love that. And in my notes here, I actually have self-perpetuation, perpetuating addiction and a lifestyle. I love that. (laughs) That is so cool. I mean, I guess it really does become this love. So you're in Kansas. Is the comic book store, did that reside in Kansas or was that Colorado based? No, the the comic shop that I had was in Inglewood, Colorado for a few years. Yeah. About two and a half years. I had um, two and a half, three years. I had a shop uh, in Inglewood uh, called Bartertown Comics and um, just uh, really, just really a high point in my life, especially in my collecting life, you know, just um, being able to do what I love and, you know, as my main source of income and my vocation um, just you know I don't know if I'd do it again but <laughs> it, it was it was a lot of fun and I met a lot of wonderful people through it that um, you know I've kept as lifelong friends you is- know there really is so many and I'm learning this from all of our guests these like underground cultures I assume that is definitely the case in the comic book figurine world am I wrong Oh, definitely. No, there, there definitely is. And, and I mean, I think in, in a more modern sense, you know, in a more contemporary sense, I think with social media, it just, it just grows and grows. And, you know, I, I interact with so many people on a daily basis, uh, just appreciating the hobby and, you know, talking about what's going on in the hobby, whether it be vintage or, or new release type of material, just, um, you know, like Facebook groups and, youtube channels and you know live events and et cetera et cetera um it's really grown and just it's just a massive massive group of people uh you know it's like you think of collecting as a you know as a an overall group then all the little subgroups within you know e- each category like each brand or character or property or whatever has its own subgroup of people that appreciate it as, as much as most of the other people in the group so it's a lot of fun. Yeah. What did we do without the internet to find our <laughs> like-minded peer? Well, you did what you had to do. You opened up a comic store. So did the yeah. you know close of the comic store come as a result of just realizing all these things could be done online? What what, what happened there? Just change of life? Oh, I mean, partially. I mean, digital comics. Yeah. But I, I just, I mean, as far as my shop goes, there, there was just a lot of, um, in, in terms of the location of it, it wasn't the best location. And it was in a it was in a strip mall, quote unquote strip mall. That it really it, I started it back in 2008 when I lived in Texas, and it was only online. And when I moved back here uh, in 2009, 2010, um, I started putting in motion, and I had already started putting in motion before the financial uh, collapse of 2008, uh, opening up a comic shop. So it wasn't exactly the best time. I feel like if I would have waited maybe to open a shop now, uh, you know, pandemic aside and like not get really considering that, but I think if I would have opened it maybe now or a year ago, I think it probably would have stayed open longer, mm-hmm. but, um, just kind of a weird time for a lot of people, uh, financially. Um, again, the location was not the most hope high profile location. So, um, you know, it, the, the building itself was, was very run down and, um, you know, there wasn't a lot of maintenance going on in the adjoining, the adjoining comic, I mean, the adjoining uh, shopping locations with the most of them were vacant. So we were That's like rough. two doors. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We were like two doors down from a Qdoba restaurant. And so like, it just, the sewers were terrible. It didn't like, I couldn't get that good, like comic shop patina like i would i would get it and then like the sewers would back up it oh was just, no it was, it was rough <laughs> it's really terrible people would walk in the shop and and, and leave because it smelled so bad oh no yeah at those one are point the, the, yeah yeah <laughs> it's really, i mean i can laugh about it now i was really i was certainly angry about it back in the day but oh yeah i would you know go to the management office they'd be like here's the key just go in that suite and just flush the toilet every couple of days oh like, gosh that's yeah that's, that's not okay no good <laughs> no but um i'm kind of you know honestly i'm kind of glad to be out of it to be honest with you because i just really and, and i kind of agree with this philosophy and this ideology is that when i was re- researching opening a shop 
the main thing that I kept coming across over and over again is that you can't you can't be a collector and a comic shop owner. Oh yeah. Very sele- very successfully because you're going to want to keep all the good stuff for yourself, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. I, I tried to operate on that mentality and then by the time I got out of there, I just almost I'm not saying I despise the hobby or despise collecting, but I've de- I had definitely stepped away from it quite a bit and I, and as soon as I could, you know, as I became financially stable again and, you know, personally and mentally sound, you know, I, I was able to get back into it. I'm just naturally you know, naturally gravitated back to it. Sure. You know, and they say, you know, know, that whole idea of if you're, if you make your hobby, your work, then it's no longer your hobby. It's you, you like it less. So maybe partially yeah. some of that. <laughs> Absolutely. It, 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 it's definitely true. And I, and I definitely experienced that firsthand. And mm-hmm. honestly, I'm, I'm so glad I, I love the hobby so much that I would take it over running a small business any day. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, well, let's do that. Let's, let's talk about, you know, this combining of thrift and your collection because now it, it well, first question, yeah. are you willing to sell some things? Do you sell online at all? Or are you just a collector now? Oh yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely an, uh, I'm a collector chiefly, you know, sure. but I, I, I do sell things uh, from time to time. I don't really, I'm not what's called a scalper, which would be one of the categories of quote unquote collectors. I don't really consider them collectors necessarily as much as just people who, you know, would like buy a PlayStation 5 and sell it for like three times the retail price oh, because yeah. they're scarce, that kind of thing, you know. Uh, but I, I'm not a scalper. So I, I just want to establish that right, later right off the base because that's sure. kind of like the, the lowest category of quote unquote. Oh my gosh, I'm learning something new every day. Okay. Scalper (laughs) is a term. So what category do you fall into then? I, I, I would say I'm just like a lifelong or just like a legacy collector, just somebody that just absolutely just can't stop. I mean, I just, I mean, I, I do, I do limit myself and you have to limit yourself because there's so much absolutely stuff of absolutely so much stuff available. Sure. That I mean, so many buying options. And well, let's talk about that. What are you, what are your favorite things? Give us like high level categories of the things oh. that you collect. Oh, absolutely. Uh, definitely. First, first and foremost is, uh, is transformers. That's, that's the, that's the thing I collect the most. Awesome. Uh, and really look for it. And I really base my collection. Are you a child of the eighties? <laughs> oh, absolutely. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, definitely a child of the eighties. Um, after that, uh, Mad Magazine, uh, definitely my my really bread and butter. Those those two things, which is really odd. I don't think you're gonna find many people that would say those those two things. Are your t- <laughs> yeah, that are your top category. So, okay, keep going. What else? Uh, Gru Gru the Wanderer. Um, Sergio Aragones. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> my, I hope our listeners know about this is amazing. <laughs> definitely. If you're into like humorous comics that, you know, kind of edgy humorous comics or just if you love things like Mad Magazine and, and the like, which is probably less and less common with people, you know, young, you know, younger than a certain age. <laughs> you know? Sure. Because, um, you know, definitely check out Sergio Aragones, uh, excellent artist, um, highly underrated. Uh, I love, um, I love Eastman and Laird. I love the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, GI Joe, Masters of the Universe. Oh my gosh, these are like speaking my my love language of my childhood. I love this. So, how does it relate Star to thrift? Wars. How how do you find these things in a thrift store? Well, I'll tell you, we go to about. I would say probably at least six different arcs religiously every weekend. And I turn up some just amazing things by just going to arc. And I def- definitely Valerie has, she definitely has, has she can find a, a much higher volume of her stuff than I can, you know, for mine. Mm-hmm. And she goes and she, she thrifts and she, you know, she upcycles clothing into doll clothing, but I definitely, you know, I, I go with her. And I'm always on the always on the prowl. I don't strike gold quite as much as she does, but when I do, it's it's usually something pretty special. 
That's you know? incredible. So let me ask yeah. you, I mean, are these, you know, sometimes I bet you, because I'm picturing our stores right now, putting 10 superheroes into a bag and selling them for a buck or whatever. Is that kind of where you find those treasures or kind of describe it to us? Yeah, absolutely. So generally I, I had come to the cases, which oh. are, when I say the cases, you know, that they're usually are some pretty good things about every other week or maybe at least once a month. Um, they tend to have a pretty good rotation in those things. Um, especially lately, like people, it just seems during the pandemic, people have just been donating like crazy, cleaning, out, yeah. cleaning everything out. I know we have for sure. And, and I like to go to those cases because I think a lot of the times it's fairly easy to tell the pieces that are, you know, that are going to sell well you know, or that are just like a little bit more special than just some stuff they're throwing in the bags. However, those bags should not be ignored. When I say the bags, I mean, like in the toy section, mm-hmm. um, the bags hang in random stuff. I mean, I find, I find awesome, like complete old school wrestlers, oh, wow. wrestler <laughs> figures. I find, <laughs> I find transformer stuff. I found one of the coolest things I've ever found um, not the coolest thing, but one of the coolest things I've ever found um, was, was half of this transformer. And this, you know, this may seem a little obscure, but half of a very large transformer um, from about, I think, 2003. And I was excited because it was one that when I had my comic shop, I had actually sold and always regretted selling. Uh, you know, I had it perfect. So I was able to, by finding that half of it, it put it into motion for me to go into eBay and look for the other half. And I was really surprised that there were dozens of auctions for just the half that I needed. Oh my gosh, so, that's incredible. <laughs> so, and that's what's cool about Transformers and Thrift is that you really can find just like piece by piece. But I was able to, I was able to finish it. If, if anyone's wondering if, if anyone is interested, it, it's the uh, the Transformers and Ener- Energon Omega Supreme, and I I bought the left half at the thrift store, and then I got the right half off of eBay. That's crazy. I put, yeah, <laughs> I finished it, and I completed it. I mean, it's complete. It's it's in really nice shape, and I put a vintage G one Transformers head from the eighties on it, and it it's an amazing piece. I, I love it so much. I. I I really, had, you know, I was really glad because it really did. It, it transported me back and let me fill the gap in my collection that had been created. But you know, and it, and that does kind of bring me back to that one question that you had about selling things. Is that you know, when I had my shop, I was able to keep it open with the sale kind of of my collection that I wanted to purge, the portion of my collection that I wanted to purge. I mean, I was, I was selling things that you know, below value of what they would go for on eBay, for example. But um, at the time, I would say that eBay was more, was more, was looked upon a little more fondly than it is now. More and more people are moving away from places like eBay or, or different services like Macari or things like that. As there, the fees have just gotten ridiculous. You know, mm-hmm. you have to price things so high that, you just can't, I mean, you can't really get anything off there for cheap like you used to, unless you're, you know, you have to really kind of get lucky in that regard. So how do you sell? Are you more like Instagram based or? I, I have the last time I sold just several pieces was I sold them on eBay. And, and this is kind of how infrequently I've been selling. I haven't really been selling as much as I've been buying. Mm-hmm. But um, coincidentally, uh, this Sunday, the third, uh, April third. I don't, you know, I don't know if this podcast will come out after that, uh, if it will air after that. But um, there's the uh, Toy and Doll Super Show in um, in, Nor- in uh, North Glen over at I twenty five and one twenty. Oh my gosh! In Colorado, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's in Colorado, and it. Uh, and so it's good to be back there because that's how I used to sell in the past before I had my shop is by just going to those toy shows. Shows, toy shows. Okay, yeah, tell us absolutely. about that. What is a toy show like? I didn't even know. I mean, I just learned last year that ThriftCon exists, you know? Tell us about oh a toy God. show. I assume there's tons of people who buy thrift and resell at these toy shows. 
give us a little Probably taste so. of that. Yeah, I definitely. And I know there's going to be another show that's going to be out here too, a, a vintage specific show where it's really encouraged for the dealers to have you know vintage items. But um, a lot of these shows are people just with tons of loose merchandise that they've gathered that they have. And, uh, you know, if you're really like an obsessed collector, you're generally picking up stuff kind of on just like very regular basis. It's not, you know, you can get, you can get things for not a whole lot of money, Mm -hmm. you know, and to either complete your collection or just, you know, turn around and fund your collecting, you know, and if you break even, then you're doing good. Right. Sure. You know, it's just kind of, like, kind of how it went with my with my shop and everything. It's like, well, I didn't really lose any money. I didn't really make any money, but you look know. at all these great things I found in the process. Yeah, I, I mean, didn't die. Yeah, there you go. I I love this description that I have for you in the notes about you know capturing this feeling. I mean, I feel like you're really sharing that with us. This you know, thrill of yeah. the hunt and finding these gems and recapturing this nostalgic moment. Talk about that a little. When I think of that specific feeling, I try to go as far back as I can, uh, you know, for, for my own fulfillment and my own gratification. I think about the times when I was young and I used to go to the comic shop and I'd be excited about found, you know, finding this thing that I either didn't know existed or never thought I would ever have a chance to find just because, you know, when you, when you grow up in a really small town, you really don't kind of have access to the things that a lot of the bigger cities, you know, have like an actual comic shop or like, you know, versus just like a used bookstore that just has stacks and stacks of like tattered old, you know, comic books or whatever. Yeah, they don't even know what they have at that point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but that, that's pretty much it. I mean, just that feeling when, you know, you're just you know, you, you keep it, you keep in mind constantly as a collector, the things that you'd like to have or the things that you're looking for to complete certain portions of your collection. And then when you find a part of it, you know, it just sort of kind of becomes fulfilling in a way. Yeah. I just love that. I think that, you know, in a rough world, hobbies like this can really bring you joy from your past then you know, why not? It's, it's pretty cool. Um, I I do want to ask about some of your Facebook groups that you belong to. And, you know, if our listeners have questions or are dabbling into this, are you open to giving advice and, you know, chit-chatting with them? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. One group that I can really strongly recommend that, uh, that new, you know, new members to the group wouldn't necessarily get lost in the shuffle is actually a local group. Uh, from a guy that I've known forever, you know, and one of my really good friends, I made a connection at, you know, selling at, at this toy show, the one that, you know, hasn't been going on for a couple of years now, but starting again. But, um, but I, I'd like to plug that group specifically if I could sure, uh, for anyone. I mean, anywhere in the world, uh, it's a great group. It's not super active. Then again, new members are always welcomed and advice just flows freely. If there's any, you know, related to finding specific items or you know what's coming out or and they've even got a regular podcast too but it's open your toys group very cool and i mean i'm just thinking about the people that maybe are into thrifting and they're you know kind of dabbling in this whole vintage toy era and they get something and they're wondering what it's worth this might be a valuable tool to ask questions on and say, you know, how do I care for this item? And well, you know what, that's the other question I have, Shane, if you find a toy that's kind of beat up and battered, is there still value? Like, you know, how some things, if it's totally not in mint condition, it's not worth anything. Is there still, still value in a toy that may have some scuffs? Yeah, absolutely. And there are people that restore those type of items, but if you're not someone that, you know, that does that, then you can certainly, you know, get some trade value or even, you know, just a few dollars here and there. And, you know, depending on how many items you sell, but I, there's really value in anything. Mm-hmm. Truthfully, you'd, you'd be surprised that, you know, people will just say, I'll take that, you know, wow. <laughs> just okay. put up a picture. Yeah. One specific group that it's a huge, I think it's the largest Facebook action figure group is action figure junkies. I think they're the largest one. I, I 
I don't really actively trade right now or sell anything on there, but I see it all the time. People just put up, you know, put a post and they're just like, you know, here's what I have and here's what it, here's what it is. Just instant message me. And, and the best way to do that, you know, people just, you know, trade funds over PayPal, you know, and just ship to each other. And there's really very little that happens that would, you know, you know, be negative in terms of like, you know, getting ripped off or, I mean, I'm not saying that it couldn't happen you know, as with anything, you have to be careful, um, you know, even on Facebook marketplace, but um, really Facebook marketplace is fairly active too in sure. terms of toys and, you know, action figures and everything. Educate us about this trade value situation. So do people actually go, Oh, I've got this figurine, you've got this one and we trade. How, how does it work? Well, generally, um, people are either going to say, I want to sell this, or they're selling, they're saying, I will sell this, or I'm also willing to trade for, for this, for example, or I'm looking for this and I have this and, you know, is anybody interested? You know that. And I think people make a lot of solid trades and sales off just doing that. I, I, I almost think at this, at this point, again, with the fees and everything associated with eBay and PayPal and everything like that, it's just a better way of doing things and keeping it simple versus just paying some third party to, you know, shuttle your goods around, and, yeah. you know, et cetera. So see, this is fascinating. Again, another <laughs> underground world that we are learning about. Um, I do. Yeah. <laughs> one of the questions that our producer sent over was she wanted to understand the authenticity versus a knockoff knowing about oh. like manufacturers markings explain like figuring out authenticity with toys specifically i think at thrift you're less likely to find something that's a high profile collectible that you're not going to be able to discern from the real thing or a knockoff most things are not are knocked off you know overseas and, and it's kind of stay overseas mm-hmm. but i mean depending on who's donating your stuff. I mean, you could find some, some different things, but I mean, I think when you're talking about thrift, I mean, you're talking about, you know, a bag of, you know, 15 different things or 10 different things. And you're just going to get a mix Mm -hmm. when it comes to, you know, when it comes to like, um, especially like with the superhero stuff, it's fairly easy to tell. There are different collectible levels of these things. But I think it's it's fairly easy to tell if you're getting something that's, you know, not, you know, the genuine thing that's maybe been, you know, knocked off in another country or something like that. But so interesting. probably not going to have it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I have to ask you, favorite part of town to find toys in, in terms of thrift stores? What part of town is your favorite? Um, I would just, I would have to say East. I would have to say definitely. Aurora uh, kind of. I. Yeah, I really enjoy the arc over at Isla from Buckley. Yeah. I love that. Love that arc. It's a great, great store. store. <laughs> love it. <laughs> and it's huge. It's like the biggest one in our system. And that place is just raging. It has so much stuff to dig through. Okay. That's yeah. great advice. Yeah, All right. Yeah. So you did kind of tell us about one of the coolest toys you've ever found, that Transformer. But do you have another story, like coolest toy you've ever found? I mean, it's not a very exciting story, but then again, that kind of comes back to what we're talking about. It's exciting for me in that it kind of encompasses a lot of, of what I see as, you know, valuable for my just collecting nostalgia, but, um, capturing that that feeling, right? I love that. We're going to call this episode. that. That's awesome. (laughs) Absolutely. Um, I found, so I, I, like I said, I like to go to the cases and that to me is just, it's exciting because you know, you're going to see something in there, even if it's not something you're going to buy, you're like, Oh, cool. That's, that's cool to see. And, you know, um, Valerie found a, a Chrissy doll from the seventies that just, just in beautiful shape. We found that just last weekend, but <laughs> that's awesome. uh, I think about a, maybe about a month and a half ago or a couple of months before that I went into the, it's at the arc. It's over in, um, it's over in Highlands Ranch. It's over on. Um, oh yeah, Quebec Centennial. Quebec yep. and County Line, kind of mm-hmm. around there, and it's got the like two staircases on this, or the two handicap ramps on the side, and the yep. staircase in the center. But it, I just I walked in there and I said, 
I said, is that what I think it is? And it was an Alfred E. Newman Superman figure. And oh. So it's, it's just, in, it's in beautiful shape. He's got, he has like Mad Magazine printed on the back of his cape. Oh, wow. And he's just, he's just awesome. I, I could show him to you. I know this is, you know, an audio podcast, but <laughs> If anyone doesn't know what that is, research it. There's, you know, there's a Batman one. There's a Green Lantern one. And that was just sitting in the case. Did they know what they had? (laughs) Oh yeah, they they had it. They had a mark about twelve bucks, which is pretty high. So you can see, you know, you can see they they know what they're doing. I bet somebody would would buy this. And I mean, I I was that sucker, man. (laughs) (laughs) That's amazing. I I, I think I want that. (laughs) Yeah. And before I ask you about your unicorn item, though. I do have to ask, like, yeah. what what would you say to people that are just kind of dabbling in this? What's your advice, Shane? Well, I would just say do what makes you happy when you're talking about collecting in general and especially with thrifting. I mean, don't be afraid to purchase, you know, a bag for $3 or $4, you know, to get, you know, that one thing in there that you like, you know, uh, I, I definitely, I know I say the word definitely a lot. Sorry about that. No, that's fine. <laughs> that's, that's a nervous <laughs> habit, right? <laughs> but I, I, um, I, I would just say that in general, like, don't be afraid to, you know, try new things with collecting and, you know, branch out from the thing you love the most and, uh, you know, explore different sectors of, of the hobby because there it just it's just getting better and better for toy collectors. Well, well let's better. talk about yeah. that. I mean, how have you seen thrift change over the years? I don't think I've ever seen as much cool stuff. I mean, it could just be related to where I am with my collecting and where I am in this hobby personally, but I've 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 seen the kind of the the department store um, characterization become more pronounced versus just kind of a massive spread, messy, you know, disheveled, you know, trash pile to dig through. It's really, it's, <laughs> it's a really, it's a concerted effort on the part of the people managing and running these stores to really try and categorize everything, get everything where it needs to be so that, you know, you're shopping and thrifting has become so popular over the years. And, you know, I mean, I get a good majority of my clothing from thrift. I mm-hmm. get, you know, I get things that, that don't fit me that, you know, I can just have my, my glorious, beautiful wife just alter for me. Well, yeah. Well, you <laughs> live with a master sewist. Yes. <laughs> Easy for uh, me to say, but yeah, I, I, I've def, I've, here I go with the definitely easy. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I just, I see it. I see it becoming much more sophisticated than it used to be oh i love that categorization yes yeah it it really it really has yeah it it really we've seen this shift and i think you know even five years ago i never would have thought that we could do a podcast and that people would tune in to you know hear about these exciting collectors like you and interesting thrifters and resellers i mean who knew right it's just it's pretty fascinating. I, I'm I'm excited and, and I'm so grateful to people like you that are willing to kind of share your deepest, darkest and and educate us about this underground world of, um, you know, toy collecting. So bravo and thank you to you for that. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Happy to happy to help. Well, you know, I have to uh, ask about your unicorn item, especially since you're a collector. Put it out into the ARC world. Ask the ARC gods to provide. What are you hoping to find the next time you walk into a thrift store? <laughs> I th- Okay, so I would love... <laughs> you have one. I love this, Shane. Yes. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I just instantly, like, I mean, I didn't even pre-think it. He just said it, and it just popped in my mind, but... <laughs> You know, and it, it's not necessarily one specific item as much as it's like a type of an item, uh, most likely in the Transformers category, but it wouldn't have to be. But that would that would be the thing that would truly blow my mind with thrift is if there was a Japanese or just a G1 boxed Transformers item. Like, yeah, I went into an ARC thrift store, walked to the glass cases, and I found just an old vintage, not even necessarily in perfect shape, but just to see that 
just to see someone donating something like a, you know, a G1 Transformers item or, you know, an, a Japanese, you know, Transformers inspired line like Diaclone or, you know. Oh my gosh, you like, just painted a manifestation <laughs> for us right there with such detail about how you're going to find it. When it happens, you need yeah. to let us know. And a picture, please, please, please. I dream about, I dream about these things. I dream about <laughs> shopping for toys it's it's kind That's of silly so cool. no i love it i love it we we learned something new and you know you're makes gonna, me happy. yeah it w- brings you joy and i'm so excited that arc is even a tiny piece of that is is pretty special so I belong thanks again to, yeah i belong going back to the whole thrift thing i belong to a couple of different thrifting or antique store uh, Facebook groups. Yeah. But I see people, I see people find this stuff. I really do. I see them find these old box items from the eighties. I mean, just anything that's old and vintage from the eighties, the box toy, yeah. you know, from the nineties, just something just when you find it and you're just like, how did this even get here? That those are the coolest moments for me yeah, personally. The best you know? stories. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Before I ask you about our queen, one Miss Dolly Parton, I share all the ways yeah. <laughs> how people can find you, how they can reach out, how they can buy from you, listen to your podcast, all the ways. Yeah, no worries. Um, you know, again, I mentioned I, I do post in uh, Open Your Toys group. I'm not necessarily selling online right now but um, if anyone wants to find me at a toy show they can they can uh, research the toy and doll super show if they live in Colorado uh, but um, other than that um, I'd recommend getting on to um, you know that the Facebook group that I mentioned or uh, just getting onto your local Facebook marketplace in general and you know I know several individuals that really do really well there, you know, and can find the things they're looking for um, just by, just by looking. I mean, it's a constant, it's a constant search, you know, but um, I'm also Valerie and I are at um, BMR, BMR uh, stands for Barbie Millicent Roberts, uh, BMR and the bots. Uh, That's, uh, that's our IG channel, our Instagram. Mm-hmm. And uh, from there, you can find all Valerie's links if you're interested in uh, the doll hobby. Uh, Valerie does uh, custom doll clothing, which she makes and sells patterns for, kits for. She's uh, got a YouTube channel, My Stitch and Dollyverse, uh, which is um, very active and has, a, I think, about getting close to a thousand subscribers on there. And it's pretty good. Um, <laughs> and then um, beyond that, I mean, probably just uh, reach out to me on Facebook by sending me a message, uh, instant message and happy to respond and, uh, you know, see if we can help each other out in terms of our collecting our collecting interests. I love it. And what is your Facebook yeah. handle just in case people are, are interested in reaching out? It's just me, just my name, Shane Montroy. Perfect. Yeah. Shane, I love it. You're a delight. But before you go, I've got to ask uh, anything you want to say to one <laughs> Miss Dolly partner, or a story or a revelation you'd like oh, to share? Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of Dolly content out there. There really is. She is she is absolutely amazing. She's she's definitely a national treasure to to be certain. Uh, one one hilarious memory. Oh man, she's she's got so much personality too, right? It's amazing. <laughs> oh yeah. So she's at a show and someone in the crowd is yelling, "I love you, Dolly!" You know, and she says, "I love you too, honey. I thought I told you to wait in the trunk." <laughs> <laughs> She does know how to work that crowd, right? Oh my God. Beautifully. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Ah, that makes me smile. <laughs> Shane, seriously, you are a delight. Thanks for sharing all the ways that people can reach you and your lovely wife with us. And uh, just for taking the time, is there anything else you want to tell our listeners? Um, just to, uh, again, just do it, do it, make yourself happy and, uh, if you can 
don't pay the scalper prices for anything. Mm-hmm. You know, there, there's always a way to get around having to do that. Maybe not every single time, unless it's, you know, it's something that you really, really want. But uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend supporting people that go out and buy everything off the shelf just so that there's a shortage of it. Yeah. And you know, so I don't, they get hurt others. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't approve of that. That's not, not, not kosher to me. <laughs> yeah. That's our PSA of the day, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Shane, thanks so much for your time. Listeners, yep. thanks so much for joining us today. A reminder, please subscribe and leave us a five-star review about how funny, creative, and smart we are. And if you're part of this unique thrift culture or collecting culture and you'd like to join this podcast, please send me an email, maggie at arcthrift.com, or you can reach out via Instagram at arcthrift and now on TikTok at Arc Thrift Stores. Thanks so much. Have a great week. It's the Get Thrifty Podcast. This podcast was powered by Arc Thrift Stores and edited by Avocet Communications.